Hey, I'm Kev Care, I'm Mr. Cole, and welcome back to Motor GP17 and the Manager Quiz. We're setting off the two flying laps around the Fair Flying Circuit in Australia. In the middle race of the Flyer Race is near the end of the season. And what a beautiful circuit it is with some gorgeous sunshine. Oh, looking down on the riders. This qualifying one session has. McDonald's been very fast round here in the past, but it's never really matched up with race results until the Moto 2. Of course, we're looking to repeat that as he's tried to chase down Mavic Vinayas for the Moto GP title. This is like a bit wide into the left, but this circuit, I do love it. Oh, have to be careful getting on the power though. Out of some of the corners. But it's fast, it's flowing, it's undulating. It's all you want in a motor to racing circuit, really, in my eyes. And it's very tricky to ride around, such as this corner into the right. Gotta break before you go down the hill there. If you break after, you're in a world of pain. You can see McDonald, he's been sliding the rear end a bit in his first effort. But I think it's still a good lap time. Around 1 minute 25 in it. It's like 126, 26, 5. That should be right up there. Or oh, as he goes a bit too early into the first corner. But in his second corner, you can take so many multiple lines into it. And Tom McDonald's gone for the tight line. And he paid barely any speed through the apex in there, almost a second down already. Let's go through Casey Stone and Corner. There's a bit of a bump there, which used to catch us out, but it doesn't seem to be that bad for MotoGP bikes. It's a bit wide out of the hairpin. And now we start rising again. Second gear for this left ladder. That's a very wide line from McDonald. However, he's compensated by getting on the power slightly early. He's getting back slightly. Do this or that. Just trying to push through all the corners here. Don't want to be doing that around this track. <laughs> so you push, you're more like you're going to make a mistake and then go off. And you can see he's a second slower. I don't think he's going to improve. So let's just return to the pits. And let's see where he's going to end up in this session. Oh, he's. So much quicker than anyone else. It's like we're taking it all over again. 1.4 seconds faster than Volga. He also makes it through just pipping Petrucci by a thousandth of a second on his tech free ahead of the Premac. With a spark grown four, Fred in fifth, Bad Seer, Fred in seventh, Miller eighth, Houston ninth, for about tenth, Rivera eleventh, around twelfth, and the KTMs and those right at the back. So can McDonald carry this form through? The qualifying two. So here we are doing our qualifying two event. One shot at pole. Can McDonald repeat what he did in Motegi, the last race? He's going to the first corner, fourth gear, going wide, went over the bump for Ross's rider. Not a good first corner. Into the second corner, came a bit more speed than he did in that second effort, at least in qualifying one. Could be smooth on the power though, so easy to lose the rear end. Casey Sonic on a slight lift. Now into the hairpin, sliding the bike towards the apex. Around 40 miles per hour. Flat out through to the right and into the left again. More bumps in the braking zone. You can see why this fear fighting so it's so tricky, not just with the fast flowing corners, but with the braking as well. In fourth gear through the left. Or right, should I say, then through to there, down to third, over the hill. Remember, got to break before you go down. Donald, or a bit wide though, came too much speed. Now the final couple of corners, they're a bit flowing when you're on a Moto3 bike. A bit more stop start on a GP bike. Or should I say, it's the opposite actually, it's a bit more fun on a MotoGP bike, a bit more stop start on a Moto3 bike. As one really does lead into the other. Now we've crossed the line with another 26, 26 fire from McDonald. 
Very consistent with his lap times, but where will this leave him? On the grid. As we skip time. Oh, he's just going to grab hold once again by a couple of tenths of a second ahead of his championship rival, Vinardis, with his teammate, the Flying Finn, backing him up on the front row. We've got Rossi leading in the second ahead of Marcus down in fifth. Dovi in sixth. Then Pedroza leads the third row ahead of Crutcho and Inoni and leading the fourth row. Zorenzo once again with Zarco and Volga, the Tech 3 Yamaha. So, can the elusive hammer cross the finish line in first once again? Yes, here we are looking at the good with Blue Steel and Magnum on the front row, sandwiching the championship rival Vin Lardas in second. I'm sure he's going to feel safe heading into the first corner, isn't he? As looking further down, there's a home hero, Jack Miller, down in 18th. And on the special row, once again, is Bradley Smith on that KTM. Everything's ready for the race to start now. We're just waiting for those lights to go out. And the riders will take these last few seconds to focus on the race ahead. There's the run. You can't actually see the first corner, can you? It's over the rise. Dip down slightly towards the first corner. It's a long run as well. Very fast. He will come out on top and get the whole shot. For this seven that race as the lights go out. We're we'll getting a decent start, but here comes the flying fin. And this time McDonald's holding on. Oh, went slightly wide over that bump again. Tires might be critical near the end of the race, so we've got to watch out for that bumpers. Oh, Vinales takes out McDonald. This happened already. McDonald's down to last, being taken out by his championship rival. Would you believe it? Now McDonald's got to battle through the field, beginning with the KTMs and those. Easy enough. Up into the top 20. Now he's behind the Mark VDS bikes. Looking around the outside of the home hero. I believe that is the battle middle. It was the home hero. So up into 19th for McDonald. Now he's going to be looking around the outside of Rabat because that becomes the inside for the pro corner. Going around the outside of Rins as well. And now he's got Baptista in front. Got a tech freeze. And we're being very cautious into the hairpin. And all being hit by the Tech 3. Oh, he's struggling to get the power down. He's been hit by both Yamahas. What is going on here? Down to 21st at the end of this opening lap, is he? Is he going around the outside of the Mark BDS bike? Just getting squeezed everywhere as Rossi leads. Bernardo's down to fourth behind Marquez. Mark coming to the party. No, the flying fin needs head of Rossi. As we back up to 18th, but he's got a mountain to climb this race. First of all, he's got to get into the points, pass Alois Baz, pass Alex Rins, pass Alvaro Baptista. Almost into the back of the Frenchman. Bruce Casey Stone corner. And then see, you've got the Tech 3 battling hard with the Ducati as McDonald puts the grass. Well, let me battle myself. The riders, such as Baz, and Rins around the outside of the Suzuki. Volga down to 15. Not a good race for the German. Now here comes McDonald on the other satellite Tech 3 Yamaha. Looking around the outside of him and Baptista nicely done up to 14. Now he's got Spargo on the Aprilia in front. We're looking around the inside. I'm making the move though. You also got Crutcher and Petrucci holding each other up. You can see a top 10 right in front. And McDonald goes through the final corner. Good exit. Again, looking to the outside line. Elbow to elbow. As the front thing does the fast that 28 6. He can sort of over 200 miles per hour into the first corner. Looking down the inside of Crutcher. Oh, you never really want to be in that position with the English. <laughs> Very aggressive rider, but McDonald survives. Now, oh, oh, heading into the second corner, they get back past though. Being very cautious. Does not want to get taken out again. Does McDonald. Because if he does, that will be championship over. He knows that he needs to grab points. Every point counts at this stage of the season. As Rossi gets past Marquez. 
Oh, Petrucci ahead of Zarco. He's now holding up. And it's like Crutcho and the Apria. Lord takes advantage up to 12. And to the fast right. Oh, trying to get past the Frenchman. Going for a very wide line. Over the hill. Past the Premier Ducati. He's just about. Up into night for McDonald. And now he's on the tail of Jorge Lorenzo. And the Ducati just letting him know he's there. It's McDonald. Into the outside line and penultimate corner. Never going to work. Maybe into the final corner. Outside line seems to be working very well. He gets a good run onto the front stretch. Lorenzo not giving much room. But here comes McDonald. You've got Ian Oney on the Ziki giving the Ducati some slipstream. Nope. Going to the first corner. Oh, nice move from McDonald down the inside of Lorenzo. In, 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 only up to seventh. Now he's got Pedroza in front. I think that's Dobby in fifth, and you can see the top four just about in front of them. It's around halfway through this race. The comeback's definitely on for McDonald from last once again. It's like Silverstone all over. But he's riding like it as well. And now it's going to get tougher with these factory machines. He's looking down the inside of Pedroza already. Up into sit. Been a bit harsh on little Danny there, but it's a good move, this McDonald. Now top five right in front of him. He looks around the outside of Ducati. Oh, no one's got an answer for McDonald through that sweeping left. Now down into the hairpin. Got Marquez. Got a flying fin leading ahead of Rossi and Vinales. Bit Vinales didn't expect to see his championship rival back up here after that first lap clash. But then on to the fifth lap. He's around a couple of seconds behind his rival after being right at the back. He does the fastest at 26 6. Almost turning in too early into the first corner though. McDonald have to shift it down to third to keep the revs up, keep momentum going. They're going a bit wide into the second corner. That's a bit by design there, so you can get a good run out of it. Tire wear's not that bad, actually. First half worn. Oh, he's down through stone the corner. The bumps caught him out. Back down to seventh. He's already trying to make the move on for Droza as Vinales takes the lead from the fin. Now, oh, McDonald looking down the inside for Droza again. Danny cuts him off this time, unlike the previous lap. McDonald surges by in the end, though. Back up to sit. Could that be a championship? Oh, Pedroza looking through the fast right. That's not a good position, Danny. Could that be a championship changing moment there, those, uh, those couple of seconds? Now McDonald looking to the outside of Dovi. But Ishkati holds on. For the time being at least. So go ahead into final corner. Trying to get the run. To get some slipstream down this front stretch. We won't even need it. Look at that. Fast already as the thing grabs the lead back from Vinars. Head on to the penultimate lap of the race. Oh, the bumps are really catching him out now with the lack of grip. The tyres are forward in. Pretty well worn now. You see rear end wanting to step out again for McDonald. Here comes Dovey looking down the inside. Not making the move though. Now here comes McDonald through Casey Stone. going to take very cautiously this time. Makes it through. I didn't see Mark as it dropped back off the Yamahas in front. And here comes Dovey again, pushing McDonald wide. Dovey, I used to like you. What are you doing? Getting in the way of this title battle. That's my dog back down to sit. At least temporarily, I feel. You go around the outside into the left. There's Lorenzo Parsi in only for eight. Now down the hill into the right. Second behind Marquez. At least if he gets past Marquez, he'll only be dropping 
what, three points to Vinales maybe? Of the adventure this race has been. I reckon McDonald would take that. As we head on to the final lap there, three wide for the lead, Rossi past the fin. All through the first corner. Over a second behind Vinar Marcus, should I say. Short shift up to third. We get hard on the power. He's got a gap of three quarters of a second over Dovi. There's all the bump actually gone of Alps in there getting to the apex of that corner. Now into the hairpin. Vinales past the fin as well. And past Rossi. Oh, it's working out for the factory Yamaha team. It's in this like it's too much for McDonald on this final out with no rear tyre to catch up to the front four. As it goes into the left, and it's slightly wide. And they're trying to just apply the power. Rear tyre is having none of it. He goes into the hairpin, he's cut the gap in half to Marquez where he's losing the bike almost. So now we go through the final corner. Having to get down to third to get any traction. So he's just sliding as it's very close for the win. Has Rossi pipped his teammate? What has Rossi done to Vinales? He doesn't like the young pup trying to grab the championship. It looks like as Madonna did the fast step on his way to fear for a good recovery ride. 2.1 seconds behind Rossi. He does pip his teammate to the line. Oh, that's five points for Vinales. This loss, that could be vital at the end of this championship. As our teammate was just a tenth of a second behind as well. In for a great ride from the Flying Finn with Marquez. 1.2 seconds back. Then we had a 2.8 second lead on Dovi behind with Pedroza 7th, Ian only 8th, Lorenzo 9th, Quattro 10th, Sarko 11th, Redding 12th, Petrucci 13th, Batista 14th. And Volga grabs the final point. By almost two seconds ahead of Alex Rins with Sam Lowe's in the last. So in the championship, Van Ayers has almost a race win lead with only 50 points on the table. He leads with by 22 points after that controversial clash on the opening lap. With Marquez now out of it in the third and just looking behind him now with Rossi two points back on his Yamaha after that victory. With Dovi in fifth, 15 points ahead of the flying fin. He's gaining on a Ducati, maybe we too little too late for him with Pedroza in 7th, Renzo 8th, Quattro 9th, Petrucci in 10th. He's looking further down, Fulgur up to 14th ahead of Alish Espargo on this Tech 3 ahead of the Grissini Apria. Has Tushu Swiss right at the back as in the constructor standing to Yamaha, 148 points ahead of Honda, 42 points ahead of Ducati, virtually secured second in the championship for themselves. We have Suzuki in for three or fifth and KTM not on the scoreboard. So in the team's rankings, it looks like the factory team have now guaranteed their victory as well in this championship by 63 points now ahead of ourselves. We've got over a hundred point gap to Honda, which is Katy fourth, Premier fifth, Tech three sixth, LCR seventh, Suzuki eighth, Apria ninth, Aspar 10th, Vinti 11th, Mark VDS 12th, and Factory KTM effort at the back. Uh, so looking at the weekend recap, there's one noticeable crash, isn't there? It of everyone else. Dan McDonald started on pole, finished in fifth, still achieved the race objective. So did the Flying Finn, started third, finished third. Good results on paper, at least, for Elusive. But for McDonald, lost vital points to Vinales in the championship. But it would have been so much different if that first, well, second corner didn't happen. Well, then it has. He really did struggle on it, falling out of the tyre where. But Moto 2, from 34th to 1st for Andrea, Alejandro started second, finished second. Both smashed the race objective once again, up both into the top 15 in the championship. What the hell has happened to our Moto 2 team? They just roll reversed from the previous 14 races of the season in the last couple of rounds. Superb once again in Moto 3, the Swede won. Starts second, finish first, fourth in the championship. Omar just missed out the race objective. Start 25th, finish 26th. Missed out by a single position and once again, almost achieved the full house on race objectives. Just Omar missing 
out as D improves his photo management and cornering, the Swede improves his breaking, Leandro improves everything, Andre improves his photo management and body position, and we've earned a decent amount of credits and reputation, better any cost. As next time out, we'll be heading to the final race of the Tripeda. The penultimate round of the season around the Sepang International Circuit for the Malaysia Motorcycle. Grand Prix, can Dan McDonald bounce back out of circle which has been very kind to him in the past and keep this championship alive heading into the final round in Valencia. Can our Moto2 player just continue the crazy run of form? And in Moto3, can the Swede win once again? Find out next time, Soundfight Channel, I'll see you then.